Hey everyone, it's Sam Mackay here. Today I want to talk about how you can handle multiple currencies inside of Power BI. I see I see a lot of these questions on the on the forums, uh, and it's very obviously extremely common, uh, especially for accountants who need to do or finance people who need to uh, need to work out what is the uh, value of their potential sales. Uh, brought back to their home currency or valued in a currency right now there's a few intricacies in this uh, in this scenario and I'm going to talk through all of them and how you can actually most of them well the majority of them and, and help you solve them okay so the, the very first one the very first one is you see this table on the right hand side here this is a uh, currency table and this is generally how you how you'll get your currency data um, and so if I show you uh, the back end here I'm going to show you what you need to actually do to this table to uh, integrate it into our model so how if I click through if I click through here you're gonna see you're gonna see what I've done to this table so if you see here we've got dates and then we've got the currency pairs like so i mean this is this is common because this is how you'll be given data um you know sometimes a bank will send it to you sometimes you can download it off online um, this is how this is how currency information usually uh, is retrieved now the big thing here though is that this is really not useful at all if you wanted to um, uh, incorporate this data on the fly into your calculations so what you have to do is you want to unpivot those columns right so you have a date and then you have a currency uh, column and then you have the actual uh, exchange rate column and if I just come down here I've done a few other transformations um, because what I did was I had the currency pair and then I created the foreign currency and then I had the exchange rate so you want one line per date and per currency that is one of the key things that you have to do to then incorporate this into your Power BI model. Now if I jump back to the model, so I'm going to save that and I jump back to the model, I'm just going to show you the, the setup here. So you've got your sales data, and in this case our model is um, a dates table, products, so we're selling products to, to customers in specific regions around the world, right? And if we look at the sales data table, this is where we're going to do all our calculations. Uh, in, the, in there, we've got a currency code. So this currency uh, code is aligned to the region that we that we sold it in. So this total revenue here, right? This is uh, this is total revenue, but in the particular currency that we sold it in. So we can't then just go and sum total revenue and then call that our total sales because that's completely wrong. We need to get every individual sale here and transfer it back to our home currency in this example the home currency is uh, is Kiwi dollars is Kiwi dollars right um, so because I'm based in New Zealand so that's just just how I've run this example now so once we've done that once we've done that what we can do is we can link up our exchange rate table to the dates table and then we'll, we've also linked up the dates table to the sales data table right so we can then work out now now with the setup we can work through out through formula each of those individual each of those individual uh, amounts currency adjusted okay so if i just give you an example here and i go sum of total total revenue right and i drag that in this is a completely incorrect number it gives no um it, it does not tell us at all at all how much um how much we've actually sold because it's got japanese yen it's got canadian dollars it's got swiss francs in there it's got euros it's got usd so it's, it's a meaningless number so what we need to do is we need to use this function called lookup value okay and so what we want to do is we want to put it inside an iterating function so i'm going to put this inside sumx because we ultimately are summing up revenue right but we need to adjust every single row in the sales data table every single say revenue derived from a sale by the associated exchange rate now what lookup value does you can uh, put the first value here is what we want to re retrieve so in this case we want to ret retrieve the exchange rate from that exchange uh, exchange rate column in the exchange rate table we created and then we want to look up the date make sure the date is the same as the sales order date 
and then we want to make sure that the currency, the foreign currency, is the same as the currency code inside the sales data table. And then this lookup lookup value is going to, for every single sales item, then go and adjust it for, uh, then go and adjust it for the the currency exchange rate on that particular day historically, right? And so if I drag that in now, this is the actual correct number. This is the currency adjusted number. So now if we just do a small uh, adjustment to this. So what I can do here is I can go into my sales regions and I should be able to add my currency code like so. And I might actually even turn this into a matrix. Actually, I'll delete, uh, I'll delete that one and I'll bring this one across and I'm going to bring in my total sales currency adjusted. And this obviously isn't correct because because this if we look at over on the right hand side here this foreign currency is actually coming from the exchange rate table and the exchange rate table if you think about it has no relationship to the sales data table right which is where our total sales is coming from so what we need to do is we need to go and adjust this by a uh, the currency inside the sales region so if I adjust that and then now you can see per day where these sales are coming from per currency. So the key there, the key there is this currency adjustment, right? And in this case, we had to do a bit of setup. We needed to unpivot the columns so that the exchange rate was all in one row. And uh, like so, so I'll just go show you the finished table. So you see here that the exchange rate is actually in one column. Then we needed to go to the data model, make sure there was a relationship uh, from date to, to the date column and the exchange rates. And then we needed to do one last, uh, we, we needed to write some, some advanced logic inside the SUMX function. And so SUMX is an iterator, right? And it's going to the sales data table. And then for every single row in that table, it's going total revenue divided by the exchange rate for that particular currency on that specific date. And then that's how we get that total sales currency adjusted in our formula uh, and we can use this in all our different visualizations um, from here on out. Okay, so good luck with that one. Uh, this is a really common scenario, and I hope that uh, from, from the examples that uh, I've um, gone through here, you can actually incorporate this into your own analysis. As always, this will be made available uh, through the Enterprise DNA training portal, so uh, the details for that will be below. All you've got to do is enroll uh, and then log on, and you get access to this one and, and many other um, many other uh, examples as well, all, all, all examples from um, the Enterprise DNA TV channel. Okay, talk to you soon.